Welcome back to The Breakfast uh, here on PLOS TV Africa. In a follow-up to our conversation yesterday um, on uh, Ned Walker and the accusations um, against him of land grabbing and uh, the imprisonment of uh, certain Indians of the Dumuje community, we're once again joined this morning by Mr. Uche Aligbe to clarify on some of those uh, accusations. We, of course, um, initially... Uh, we're meant to be joined also by a spokesman to Ned Wonko Ade Ni Ifetayo, but uh, we seem to be having, um, you know, a change of heart, you know, with that conversation. Uh, Mr. Aligbe, good morning once again. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Morning. All right. Um, thanks for joining us. Good morning to you. We, um, you know, had um, a little bit of this conversation yesterday, uh, trying to clarify exactly. Um, what was going on in that community. Uh, the spokesman to Ned Woko had said yesterday that this had really nothing to do with um, uh, land grabbing, but it was mostly a power tussle between uh, um, uh, Nonso Woko, who is, of course, uh, currently the, or taking charge as uh, the new uh, OB, and uh, uh, Prince Ned Woko. So can we get some information from you as to what exactly might be going on? Is there a power tussle between these two persons? Um, and is that very likely the reason behind, um, you know, these accusations? No, there is um, no power tussle in that community. Our problem started even before our natural ruler died. The former one. It started 2016, that is a real problem. But the whole land issue started 2015, and we started complaining, talking about it. The problem started with them 2016 when they sent a petition to the police accusing the then crown prince. Hello? Yes, they go ahead. We can hear you. Accusing the then crown prince of forging a letter. I mentioned that yesterday. He was then referred to as crown prince all over. Even the man who wrote the petition referred to him as heir apparent. So it wasn't in doubt who he was because we don't have kingmakers. Our kings are made from birth. And so as soon as a king is born, we know this is the king and that's it. So it wasn't anything to do with uh, Tosso. Somebody just brought Tosso just to complicate issues in the town. Because the existing king, who was enthroned by tradition, and who has been known to be the one to succeed the father, because he said no to land grabbing, they decided to bring uh, some people to come and tussle with him. They first of all brought his junior brother by a different mother. That didn't work. They saw that what they were claiming was just not defensible. They removed that and they brought a totally different person who they are now sponsoring. And he's saying that his great-grandfather, great-grandfather, would have been king in the town, but he was denied. So he's now coming as the great-grandson to begin to tussle for it. I mean, it's so funny. We have a tradition of primogeniture. That's our tradition, it's hereditary. First son of the king succeeds the king. So as soon as the king has a first son, we already know that that is the king in future. We don't have king makers. So what I was hearing yesterday that uh, Ned was um, uh, telling the king that he won't support him. His support is of no effect in who becomes the king in the place. And indeed his position in the family does not lend his support any single weight, whether it's coming positive or negative, because of his position. So there is no tussle. They are just trying to bring issues to, like I said, divert attention from land issue, which is the central point. That's it. And if he says that it's tussle, we get to where he started uh, arresting people, and we get to know what it's all about. Mm. But that's exactly what I can explain to you. Okay. So, Mr. Ligbe, can you confirm to me if indeed anyone has been put in prison by Ned Nwoko over this land grab issue? Prison? 
I won't say prison or arrested. because that means um, that means somebody has been found guilty. Mm -hmm. People have been incarcerated in custodies, police and prison custodies. But let me start with the strategy he's been using. Okay. First of all, that, that starting from below, all the people, the vigilantes and the strong people on ground who are in the village, he's speaking them one by one, accusing them of certain things. Now he's beginning from above. Those who are not living in the town, but who have voice in the town. He's also starting from there. That is where, okay, if a joke comes in, you will have heard his uh, 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 here and there about one of the businessmen we have in our town, uh, uh, Dr. Gabe Obechia, and so on. He has them. He is coming from that end, coming also from the lower end, arresting people and trumping up charges against them, which I'm prepared to discuss fully here if I have the time. Yes. So there are many people in incarceration. One is in Suleja. The people, about 10 people they took to Abuja, they were granted bill under very stringent conditions. We attempted, we tried, and we managed to get those ones bailed out. It is from those of them who went again for court appearance. They were coming out. They were arrested again. Three of them are in Asaba, in incarceration. The wow. ones in Asaba have not even gone to court. They're under the police. Well, and that is uh, what's going on. But Ned, Ned himself cannot arrest, you know, anyone. Um, so, you know, you're saying, you know, that he, you know, from what, what you're saying, rather, you're saying he's working with, you know, uh, the Nigerian police, which are, these are yes. really strong accusations that you are, you are laying out well, this morning. Well, um, I would have said a strong accusation if I didn't listen to him recently. We would have said maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. But in an interview he granted, I don't know whether it's your station, he's played in, uh, on air and everybody had it. He was explaining how every single one of them was going to court and coming out. And at some point he said, the police now called him and said that the community has written a petition against them. I was, I was wondering whether he is the IG or whether he is chairman of police service commission, or whether he is minister of internal uh, uh, interior, or whether he is any chairman of any of these of his, um, uh, committees in the legislative uh, house. He is just none. So how come you are the one the police is calling and telling that they're writing petition against him, and you are explaining to the world that that is why they're now going back and arresting people and taking them? You can see that uh, there's a, a complicity, very, very silent complicity here. What are the... They didn't, call, they didn't call the natural ruler. They didn't call anybody. It is him they called. How come? What are the accusations uh, against these people, um, you know, that uh, has kept them in incarceration so far? Yes, let me, let me say the thing. Let me start from, um, uh, from up. Okay, Fejoku, as a person, okay, Fejoku is the president of presidents general of all the unions in Anyocha North. That is his personality. He is also the chairman of hoteliers in Delta North. That is the personality. And the third part of it is that he is the president general of our union. And that's why he's president of presidents general. He owns a hotel, a thriving business. And therefore he's not hungry, he's not looking for anything. And he's related with the town. He's been our president general for over four or five years now. And that is it. Now, what is his problem? He has said no to this land grabbing. I said yesterday that nobody is, uh, mm -hmm. is opposed to a project. Okay, Fejoku himself said to Ned in a meeting, look, when you start, you know my house in the village. It is decent enough to house even your VC. So you can have it, you can use it while you are developing. That is the man, okay? So what happened? But because he has said no to land grabbing, first of all, and he has said, no matter what you say, Idumu Juboko has a king, we know who our Obi is, and it is Obi Chukun and Songoko. That is his crime. He has written on this and signed in the name of the union, his secretary signed. 
his name and the name of the secretary were passed on. And they say they are part of the group of uh, terrorism, charged with terrorism. Well, his own is that uh, he is sponsoring it. He is sponsoring mm -hmm. violence. And I can tell you that he is doing that. First of all, they have gone for terrorism. They were granted bail under terrorism. They said they killed one Supreme that we don't know about. They destroyed house. When he came back to Asaba after, uh, on, on bail, the police arraigned him again on the same charge of killing one Supreme, and this time another Kennedy. They arraigned him together with a traditional ruler and about five other people, including two vigilante men. The court dismissed it because the BDPP said there was no case in it. So he left, and they left him. He went to Abuja just to attend to the case of terrorism. And while he was coming back, he was arrested with another vibrant young man, Godwin and Yemeka. Both of them brought to uh, Asaba. The Asaba people have no case against them. The Abuja people are saying nothing about them. And we hear that they were arrested for the murder of the same Supreme that we've been talking about, whose uh, judgment they have gone through in a court, is a new one. What the police did was that they now added a word, robbery, to make it look like it's new. Hmm. And let me tell you, people, some two young men, were ad arrested in 2017. They went through three years of incarceration in prison custody for killing this same Supreme. 2020, the court declared them free and acquitted. Both of them came out. So this single Supreme has been killed by very many people hmm. and is using it to Me arrest as many people as possible. As I'm talking like this, haven't told you people the truth. I have become a sponsor of violence. I have become a sponsor of terrorism from his own calculation. So if you ask of me to come and appear in your program tomorrow and you hear that I've been arrested for it, that is his style. That is what he's been doing. He okay. tried to do it with uh, Dr. Gabriel Obetia, the chief executive of Rain Oil, very, very big businessman. He found it difficult. He accused him of plotting to kill him. Come and prove it. He said somebody in the prison told him now bring the person in the prison. He said he has just died. He turned around and said, maybe it's the same Gabriel that killed him. So he's, uh, he killed a prisoner who has left the prison. He is attempting to kill Ned. All he's doing is just get at these people. But because the man is who he is, he can stand his ground. He can stand him. And so, so that's where he's coming. Yes. Mr. Ligbe, I need to ask you, okay, I've heard and I've read so many, you know, articles yes. saying that Ned Uwoko, accusing Ned Uwoko of arresting people multiple times for the same alleged offense in different police stations and suing them to different courts for the same offense. So you just confirmed that. Well, I want you to give yeah. me uh, some sort of a hard evidence that really indicts Ned Uwoko for all these arrests that you're mentioning. Because, we, we, you know, we need, to, we need to have this in good authority. One of the periods when the so-called witnesses for terrorism were going to Abuja, they went in his private jet. One Agiliga Light, who was arrested while he went to uh, uh, buy police, uh, buy patrol in the patrol station in the town, was flown to Abuja in his jet. All right? Okay. These are the two. Apart from the fact that we discuss with the police, we go to any length, and they say to us, give this man the land, and then you are free. And we say to them, Yes, he can get the land, but he must get it through due process. All right? So we are convinced that he's the man behind the scene. Yeah, we didn't have any evidence to say he was. But his latest interview that he granted, I don't know who took it, whether it's you or another station, where he was claiming that the police now called him, the police did this, the police did that, is he IGP? Mr. Libe, Mr. Libe, yes. you're saying that when people are arrested for so many, you know, alleged offenses, 
in the police station, the police you know, officers tell them to let Unedoko have the land and they will be free. And that witnesses That's the in the cases. That they're coming back with. Yes. And they are flown in Ned Walker's. You are saying witnesses in those cases are flown in Ned Walker's private jets. Once they were flown in his private jet, once one of the uh, victims, one of the accused, was flown in his jet. Oh, wow. So oh, what are wow. we talking about? Let's quickly just mention that these are, um, from your perspective, that these are still accusations. Uh, um, we, you know, cannot independently verify that these are true, but of course, uh, this is your testimony and these are your statements. But why will the um, police, why will the police uh, be calling him an arrest in Uboko and everything going on? Why must it be him that call it? Yeah, because I, he I, said the I, police I, called him. I understand, you know, that's what you've, you've said, you know, I just want to clarify that these are your statements. Um, we, okay. of course, initially had... Um, uh, spokesman for Ned Woko, um, Mr. Adini, Adini Fetaya, who pulled out of the interview, um, you know, at, um, you know, surprisingly, just before we started. Uh, but we're also you know, going to be joined by a traditional prime minister of uh, Dumuje community, uh, Walter Iziashi, um, hopefully he joins us before we wrap up this uh, interview this morning. Uh, Mr. Aligbe, um, what has been the latest um, on um, O.K. Fejoku's case? Have you been in contact with anyone handling the case um, in the last uh, few weeks? The courts, the courts are down. So the case cannot go to court. So meanwhile, they are still in police custody. They were arrested in Abuja after attending a court case of st on terrorism, going to the airport. They were cornered by the police, arrested, kept six days in Abuja, and brought to Asaba and dumped in Asaba. You ask the Asaba people, what do we do? They tell you our hands are not there. We are only custodians of those they brought to us. The issue is in Abuja. So what are their cases? What have they done that their issue should be in Abuja? We are yet to be told because the court is down. Maybe when they get to court, they tell us, OK? We are just hearing rumors here and there, but we don't want to uh, operate on rumors because they become rumors. The people themselves who are uh, 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 in incarceration say that one of them told them that they have a court warrant from a Nasarawa state court, so they have a right to retain them. That's what they hear. Whether it is rumor, whether somebody is just threatening them, whether somebody is ensuring that they don't act, we don't know. But you're asking me what is the situation. I can tell you the hearsay we have. I can tell you what happened that we know. That's the situation. Has there been any impute from the uh, Commission of Police in Delta State? All of them say it's an Abuja issue. That's what our lawyers who are helping us say. That they say the issue is Abuja. They are only custodians to the people they brought here. Full stop. Mm. Okay. We're now being joined by Mr. Walter Eziashi, the traditional Prime Minister of Idumije. Good morning, Mr. Eziashi. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. Let's continue with the question I, I had earlier asked, Mr. Alibi. I said that uh, when we spoke to Ned Nwoko's spokesman yesterday, he said the university that Ned Nwoko is building is nearing completion and that they had paid about 200 million naira to indigents of the community. So what then happens to the land and, you know, the money that was paid? Well, number one, let me first uh, correct um, an error. I am not the prime minister of uh, the community. The prime minister is uh, Chief Christopher Ogu. I was the president general of um, the Dumujuboko Development Union. You see, concerning the land acquisition, uh, land allocation, you see, I don't know why people don't want to let sleeping dog lie. The truth of the matter was that Ned applied for land. And while he applied, I was not even in the picture until we attended a meeting on the 11th of July, 2015. It was at that meeting that the whole thing was made bad. And I watched uh, my uh, elder brother, Uchal, yesterday when he talked about um, 
the meeting and uh, that everybody supports the university. The truth of the matter is that the problem in Edumujuboko is not about support or no support. It's all about envy, jealousy, and why should it be him? Why is it not coming from us? The entirety of Edumujuboko people are, are at peace with the, the university and all that. Ned, Prince Ned Woko, through his company Linus, applied for land. And as it is being done, when you write a letter, of course it's, it's certain that a response, a reply must be given to your letter. You see, there are two ways of uh, um, applying for land. One, I mean, two processes. If the land is maybe 100 by 100, maybe a plot or less than a plot or two plots, they don't need to go for an Izuani. For instance, who shall be my elder brother at the studio that was allocated land. He didn't go, he didn't go through Izuani. And he's still at that development site. Up to today, he hasn't developed it and the heavens start falling. You know, so the problem here is not whether the land was properly allocated or not. The problem here is all about envy and jealousy. How do you so, mean? So, 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 so are you saying that the land was properly um, requested yes, and allocated? Allocated. Now, let me, let, me, let me give you a brief detail. For, for instance, after the application, after the application, an OBIN council meeting was called, where the EJS said the Odogu, that's the traditional prime minister, the defense minister, traditional, and the rest members of the OBIN council were present. And they said the magnitude of the land is much. Therefore, it is it's a commonwealth of the entire people. Therefore, let us take it to the apex meeting, which is called Izuani, the town hall assembly. You know, and it was taken there, a committee was set up call the land the Izuane enlarged land allocation committee that committee met they came up with their minutes and their minutes are there for people to look at it was after the minutes and all that that the ob in response to a letter from a corporate body wrote a letter to liners through prince ned Moko, dated 10th of uh, april 2015. Now, I had my brother talking about um, customer right of occupancy uh, dated 2016 and um, a survey plan dated 2017. I don't know where he got that because I know that I am the custodian of all the libraries, of all the documents, and there is nothing like that. And the MOU he's saying that was signed in May 31st was not true. The MOU was signed on the 25th day of August 2015. And so, Mr. Iziashi, if you say that, you know, Ned Nwoko had properly acquired those land, the 90, 90 hectares, the other about 35 hectares, to build a university and an international golf course. So how then does the accusations of him arresting people because they failed to, you know, let the land, you know, you know, lease the land to him, how does that accusation come in that he's been arresting people on that basis? The accuser knows deep down in their heart that is all lies. Ned did not arrest anybody. You see, in 2016 uh, January, Prince um, Nasongoko and four others filed a, a civil suit at the State High Court holding at Iseluku. That matter is still on, but has been transferred to Abo High Court. It's a civil matter. Anything land is a civil matter. And criminal matters cannot be, I mean, out of sentiment or because you want um, public sentiment, you want to just label somebody. Ned never arrested anybody. What happened about issues of arrest was that in 2017, February, the late Obi died. That's the late King uh, Albert they died, you know, and um, that was on the sixth early hours of uh, seven to had the son as installed himself. I would say, no, that's not tradition. The tradition 
an old man who has no traditional affinity, who has no traditional title, who has no right, cannot install you as king. More importantly, there is an office that installs somebody as king, and that is the office of the Onihe. Ask any traditional institution in the entirety of a Nyoma nation. A Nyoma nation includes a Nyocha, not local government, a Nyocha right. South, the two Oshimilis. Mr. Aziaki, um, because of time, I want so, us to quickly get to why those persons have been arrested um, and why they're that's where, I'm coming, that's where I'm coming to. Now, the Prince Nonsumoko uh, felt that People are not supporting him, and that network was the one behind them. That's why they are not supporting him. But the truth of the matter was that people want equity, people want justice, people want the right thing done. And sometime in May, I heard them say that next and people talks to go and disrupt meeting. There was nothing like that. You know, Zamana is still alive. He's uh, an AIG now at the uh, Police Academy in Kano. He was the police commissioner here. Uh, Chuk Soseme is still alive. He was the executive council chairman and the chief secretary officer of the local government. You know, they went to him and said, you cannot call for a meeting. Security report is not favorable to you. They went to him and said, you should cancel the meeting. You know, and... I don't know what happened about that meeting. All I know was that between that 18th and 25th, people that Prince Nonso felt were opposed to him were attacked. In the process of the attack, one person was shot right there on the, at the palace gate on the market day, the community market day. So nobody will say that it was a ruse. No, it's not true. Then. One Kennedy, Kennedy Elo, who was the secretary of the Large Land Allocation Committee, was um, brutalized. And thereafter, he fell sick and he never recovered from it. He died thereafter, you know, a few months uh, later, you know. And um, so the people wrote petitions All right. first um, to the traditional police officer uh, for. Walter Iziashi. Walter is actually, we would, uh, I think we'll first of all, you know, need to apologize, you know, for, you know, the time uh, challenge that we're having. Um, we hope that we would also be able to get a response from Uchiha League Bay. It's, uh, it's a very, very big issue and there's uh, two sides to this. Uh, but we'd like to appreciate you for sharing your other side. Uchiha League Bay, thank you also for you. joining us once again this morning. Uh, we, of course, would schedule another time where we can have a bigger conversation with you both um, um, or with you know, both sides of this uh, story uh, sometime in the future. Thank you both for your time. Good morning once again. We'd love to speak with you again. Thank you. Okay, we'll turn our conversation now to the girl, child and education right after this break.